so yeah it get discontinued so as i was talking about this is high pressure region as you see in the cft diagram uh, inverted air flow in high pressure region here low pressure region here and this creates a down force at the rear wheel that creates traction in the rear wheel okay let's see what's next this is front splitter front splitter is nothing but this front side which you see here so this front side wing that you see in this kind of design this kind of fsa design so this uh, what we see in that these wings produce down force at the end at the rear wing uh, rear wheels so that creates an unbalanced moment we don't want that unbalanced moment and we have to add the down force in the front wheel also so this splitter adds a little bit of down force to the front wheel and that uh, balances the moment here what this thing also does is that the high stream the uh, air uh, high pressure region which is accumulated at the front this pushes the high pressure air to the top of the vehicle we want the high pressure region at the top of the vehicle and low pressure region at the bound at the little at the lower side uh, that creates the down force so splitter is also used there it uh, moves the high pressure air to the top side and low pressure region to the uh, bottom side so high pressure here low pressure here this also creates down force and this thing sticks to the ground that's the work of front splitter next what we have is diffusers so these are diffusers uh, if, if you have not seen it in actual cars you might have your rc toys remote control toys which you have seen so uh, if you remember the back side of it back side of it uh, it is like curved shape it is uh, like this this is gradually increasing area this is a diffuser so what this diffuser does is that this creates a venturi effect what happens is that uh, initially you see that faster high pressure uh, low pressure air is moving from the down side low pressure region is moving at the down side so uh, this is faster flowing as you see this region that uh, the air stream which is moving to a constricted region this speeds up and as you know velocity increase, increase pressure got decrease so there is low pressure here that also creates down force low pressure at the bottom that creates suction effect and this sucks the air uh, vehicle to the ground at the end the pressure is again increased the velocity is decreased and pressure is decreased pressure is increased so uh, as you see that there is a vague region created low pressure region created so this diffuser helps in mitigating that vague region so that creates that uh, reduces the low pressure region as high pressure air is forced into this section that is the work of the diffuser to improve the down force and to reduce the uh, low pressure region and uh, reduce pressure drag uh, after that we have side skirts so side skirts uh, as we have uh, as we discussed before we want low pressure region in the bottom of the vehicle low pressure region in the bottom of the vehicle high pressure at the top so if there is low pressure at the bottom and in the surrounding this is ambient pressure ambient pressure atmospheric pressure so what this atmospheric pressure wants to do is that it wants to curl inside the low pressure region so ambient air wants to rush in to low pressure region and uh, that would spoil the our entire effect uh, our entire effort to create low pressure region here as that would neutralize it so we don't want that to happen so we apply we add this side skirts which essentially which essentially as a uh, this blocks this ambient air to move to the down side of the vehicle so that is this thing to preserve the low pressure region which we have created in the down side of the vehicle that is what front uh, side skirts are used last we have vortex generators uh, so if you remember in vortex in golf balls as i have told that this dimples induced uh, turbulence so you can see in this cfd diagram also uh, this dimpled surface creates this recirculating uh, turbulent air and this turbulent air because high pressure high velocity fluid is closer to the surface this uh, delays the flow separation problem which was happening if you remember properly so this delays the flow separation that's why this dimples are used the same technique is used with the vortex generators uh, uh, these vortex generators create small turbulence here and that turbulent air 
delays the flow separation. You don't want your uh, uh, flow to separate like this. You don't want that. That will create high uh, pressure drag. So these turbulence, uh, these water generated creates turbulence and the flow separation is delayed back. Uh, delayed uh, so that the pressure drag is reduced. That is the use of this water generators. So now we have seen all the techniques which are used. Uh, little not of little about testing and simulation. So the designing is done. Now you have to test this thing and validate your design that if it is working to our needs or not. So uh, for testing, there are three major methods which are used. The first one is analytical approach. In analytical approach, we use theory and formula based approach. This is formula based approach, like the knowledge equation which you talked about. But in real life examples, uh, the formula are not very much enough for every certain kind of situation. So that this is not used much. The next one is experimental approach. So in experiment, uh, if you, as you know, because of budget or economic constraint, we cannot test to the actual model. We can't test to our actual model as that would be very cost, uh, costly. So for experimental approach, we make some type of prototype, some scaled or small prototype uh, of it and we do the test in the prototype. So for any kind of prototype testing, any kind of prototype testing, we have to make sure of this law. This is law of similarity. The law of similarity says that uh, for a model to be an exact replica of the actual, uh, of the actual vehicle which we are making, so this has to make sure that these three similarities are fulfilled. Uh, these are geometric similarity, kinematic similarity, and dynamic similarity. That means the prototype and the model should have these three similarities. So what does geometric similarity mean? Geometric similarity means that the dimensions are similar. The dimensions are scaled exactly in the model, in the prototype as it is in the actual model. So that is geometric similarity. Kinematic similarity means that the similarities of flow or uh, velocities, that is the flow field around the prototype should be exactly as same as the as that in the actual model and lastly this is dynamic similarity dynamic similarity means that the similarity of forces that is the force should scale to the prototype uh, accordingly so this is the uh, similarity of forces so in forces uh, there are uh, many terms which are involved such as the density the velocity the geometric length and the viscosity uh, so these things uh, very uh, this thing vary to a large extent many kind of parameters are there so what we do is club these uh, parameters into one single non-dimensional term so previously what was happening is that uh, what we are doing is that let's say that uh, the velocity remains same, the length remains same and mu remains same but we are changing the density first. After that we are keeping these three things same and changing the velocity. After that we are taking these three things and changing the length. So that will create a very long process. We don't want that. We want these three things to be tested in one single experiment. So these three things are clubbed together in a non-dimensional term and these non-dimensional term for our purposes there are two terms which we need to take care that is Reynolds number and Euler's number. This is the Reynolds number and this is the Euler number. These are two uh, non-dimensional terms which we need to take care for our experiments. So in any case we want to make a wind tunnel testing of our prototype uh, in our college we have a wind tunnel. So if you want to make a prototype and uh, test it in a wind tunnel these two things must be same. That is the Reynolds number of the model should be equal to the Reynolds number of the prototype and the Euler's number of the model should be equal to the Euler number of the prototype. These two things should be same to satisfy the dynamic similarity. Okay, uh, so analytical is done, experimental is done. Next very uh, interesting thing is this numerical or conceptual approach, uh, computational approach. Sorry. So what this thing do does is that we create a mathematical model of the physical object which we are testing and we apply all the physical parameters which are there and test it according to the governing equations which are present. So what it does is that this creates a computational model of our physical world uh, design 
and we do the test in the computational or using the numerical approach. So what does this numerical approach exactly means? So uh, if, you, if I say you, uh, I will give you two options. Either use high end calculus, all your differential and integral calculus, you use all those things to get to a value. Suppose you are finding x and that x is comes out to be 2.1375. This thing we are getting as the exact value of x. Now either do this and find the exact value of x or use some simpler algebraic manipulation to get the value of x closer to 2. Right. Here you are getting the exact value of x. Here you are getting an approximate value of x. You can't say that x is 1.9 or 2.1. You can say that it is close about 2. So this is what uh, is used for a computational or numerical approach. The computer used simpler forms of the governing equations to get to an approx value. So this is the very essence of computational techniques. It says that replace the integral and differentials in a governing equation. There are governing equation of a model which we make out of a physical, physical body. So th there is always a governing equation. So uh, the governing equation is very complex. It involves a lot of integrals and differentials. So uh, it says that replace all these integrals and differential equations of a model by discrete numbers and then evaluate to an approximate value. This is the basic essence of any kind of computational approach. So as you see, this is a very good representation. See, this is the discretized version. If you remember in calculus, you have seen that calculus is continuous and the summation which we have done that is discrete. Discrete summation and calculus is continuous summation. So uh, this is what the discrete sum means. This is a very rough shape of a sphere. This is not exactly a sphere. This There is very sharp corners and edges to it. So this is a 12 side structure which represents a very coarse sphere. As we add on, uh, as we add on these nodes and increase the surface mode, see uh, this gets more closer to a sphere. As this number of surfaces get increased or number of nodes gets increased, it is still dis discrete. It is not made by any curve, but there are so many, so tiny and uh, so tiny uh, nodes that this represents an sphere. So if you uh, see that uh, this is uh, approaching to the actual value very fast, but this also increases computational power. You are uh, reaching this value. Suppose you can say that uh, here you are getting this value as 2, but if you uh, increase this increase this discrete value to a very close degree. So then you can say that okay I am getting the value as 2.1. Uh, here you can say that this is getting value of 2.13. Here you can say that this is getting 2.137. So that's how the accuracy is increasing but the computational time also get increased. So very important discretization methods are there which does this job. So these are finite difference method FDM, finite volume method FDM or finite element analysis FEA. So finite difference method is mostly used for our computational CMP approach. All the CMP approaches use this finite difference analysis. For the static structural test we use FEA. Okay. So now we have talked about all the basic aspects of aerodynamics and its application. We have seen how engineers change, uh, engineers use the air interaction with the vehicle to make it go much faster and increase our handling capacity of the vehicle. So after this, uh, all the aspiring aerodynamics of the club, you, your work will deal with the body work of the vehicle. The final work which you are, final body work which we which was left. So that would be your work. Uh, also, the CFD analysis uh, would be in your part as well. So uh, these are few of the skills which you have, some good design software skills. So you must learn these two things, SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360, this would be very helpful. And for simulation software, ANSYS is good. So these are the few softwares which we use uh, for our uh, designing and testing. So this thing, uh, you might start want to start learning this very as quickly as possible. 
so with that i would conclude today's lecture on introduction to aerodynamics hope this thing is fruitful to you all and you would get a good fundamental so that you could uh, start studying the more advanced topic of uh, this aerodynamic field so thank you and have a good day